Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Um, looking very much forward to this discussion because I think education is that hotel education, hotel schools have such an important role to play, both now and in the future. But 2020 has obviously been a challenging year. How has it impacted on yourselves? Eureka, do you want to start? Thank, yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much, first of all, uh, Chris, for inviting me. It's fantastic to be here with you and Max uh, here today and for sharing our experience and our thoughts about, you know, hospitality and, and this industry in general. Well, the years so far, I think it's mixed emotions, I would say. Obviously, uh, the whole pandemic is, is, is tragic. It's sad. Um, it, it's devastating in so many, many levels. Um, but also when I look at the industry, when I look at our students, it also gives you so much hope uh, and so much pride and so much inspiration. So I, it, I think it's very, very mixed uh, feelings, to be honest with you. Um, when you see the industry, you know, fighting, coming up with new ideas, new ways of doing business, our students who just are so motivated and want to continue studying and want to um, continue being professional hoteliers and see a future and see the change. It's very, very inspiring um, at the same time that it's tragic. Oh, that's good to hear. Max, your thoughts? Thank you. Pleasure again, uh, Chris, as well as Ulrika, having you online. It's uh, great to be with you today. Uh, I share a lot of the sentiments that uh, Ulrika just communicated here. Um, I think it was a uh, Friday 13th, the 30th of uh, March, where we heard the news from the federal government here in Switzerland that uh, we were to stop physical teaching in classrooms. And immediately we started closing down everything and everything went online within a matter of hours, really. And, and I think that the impact that the whole epidemic, you know, the pandemic has had on the global situation and not at least on hospitality as a whole, will never be the same in terms of the world will be a new place. There is a new normal coming up and the resilience, the authentic hospitality that I've witnessed across the board, you see with health prof healthcare professionals or within our students and the industry as a whole, just gives me, just like Ulrika said, nothing but hope about the future, but also the idea of the importance of resilience and change and emotional intelligence in the time of change and accepting that things will never again be the same because there's been tragic events across the planet and now we're facing a new normal but hospitality as an industry will survive and will shift into across industries into a whole new thing that is at the same time very exciting to see now look if you can touch on it now i know you've just done a tour across six different cities in europe how has our experience been? That's right. I mean, the idea was to, because we, we, we try to talk and walk hospitality and what we do every single day, the excellence that is part of hospitality together with empathy. And I wanted to make sure that we go out there and, and across Europe and Germany and the Czech Republic and, and uh, across uh, Poland as much as possible, six different destinations, trying to understand how properties, hotels, and, and the tourism industry is dealing with it. What are the interactions we are ha having based on individual interactions? but also in the policies and the way that properties and, and businesses are complying and try to show that they are not only complying, but also able to delight and deli deliver an exceptional ex experience. And I have to say that across the board, the, the most positive experiences we've had has been those of extreme compliance and the sense of calm and comfort that the providers have been able to offer while at the same time being very personable, personable and, and personal in their delivery on an individual basis. And those have been really the highlights that I'm, I'm going to keep sharing across the coming weeks. Uh, I think more and more the importance is going to be how are you as a business solution provider, as a product that you have or a solution that you have, how are you able to deliver a very authentic and unique uh, proposition that is unique to you versus everything else. It's not about the competition anymore. It's about you as a provider and how authentic you can be with it. Uh, look, I, so that's my view. My, look, my view and one of the things we've been discussing over here is actually service will have a whole new lease of life and the definition of service will become more important again. I think Definitely. Um, Rika, coming back to the students, it's very good to hear how positive they've been and inspiring yeah. them because I think there's a lot of concern about the students. Yes. How, how has it changed the relationship between yourselves and the students? Has it changed it? Has it altered it? 
I think it's improved it. Like Max said, you know, when we were told by the Swiss Federal Council, you know, that we were not allowed to have any more face-to-face -face classes, we quickly had to change uh, and adapt and offer only online courses, you know, VLE classes. Uh, and obviously that we had to make that turnaround within a week. And obviously you wonder, you know, the faculty team, the teachers, the professors and the students, how will they be able to to um, learn and, and adapt uh, to this. And I have to say, both from the faculty side and the student side, it was amazing to see how they just went on ahead with it. We quickly turned it around. The students were very engaged. And I think it's brought us a bit closer. You know, obviously uh, the students were back home and it was making sure that they were healthy and safe and looking after themselves, that the families were doing as well. Uh, and that the faculty were, were doing well. Uh, we used Zoom, so we delivered all the classes via Zoom and it worked very, very well. Uh, I think it just forced us to communicate even more. Uh, you know, uh, are you available this time? Can you see, can you read, can you adapt? How do we do exams? How do we do the examinations? How do we do the project, the case studies? There was much more communication uh, and involvement, I would say, from both parties. Uh, and the students adapted very, very, very well. Max? Oops. I absolutely share that sentiment. It is exactly because I know the amazing students that Ulrike also has uh, within her campus. You know, I think it was a moment where resilience and working together was a common topic mm -hmm. across the board. Uh, students knew that everybody was trying to care in the best possible way. I think the teachers and lecturers and the faculty overall who were able to authentically connect with the students and show how much they cared they were also able to do that in an online setting. And the students knew that, and they were not being as picky as, as they could have been in, in, in a normal setting. It turns out we know that we only took a couple of days and immediately the entire curriculum, more or less, was being available yeah. online. So the students were on board, absolute majority of them, and the faculty learned very quickly that if they truly care, and they do, and that is a, a core value that we have, that unless you care for your students, you're not gonna be in front of the students, then they're gonna also be able to communicate that and connect with the students and that energy that you actually are able to transmit even through a lens of a video, yeah. a camera, that is a key to success. So in that short amount of time, now it's been almost six months, we have had this VLE virtual learning experience on offer and it has worked by far. I have to say broad things together Yep. One more added value that it has, and I know your students are feeling too, um, Ulrika, is that it has helped the students to take more responsibility for their own learning, to learn that, okay, I, I'm, I'm sitting across a computer in my own desk and, and, and chair, wherever I may be, I am in charge of creating this focus mindfully, and I'm in charge of creating an environment for myself where I actually sit and interact online and learn from it. Yeah. And that bearing is, in mind, yeah. not to cut you short, but bearing in mind no, the time difference too, Max. Oh, like, absolutely. Because you know? we yeah. have students from over 50, 60 different countries and, you know, adapt, adapting and adjusting the teaching, the different time zones, like you said, Max, worked, worked yeah. very well. And, and the students, do they have any concerns about their careers in hospitality at this point in time? Are they worried about where it's going to happen afterwards or do, are they bullish? Well, I can tell you from, from the, our experience, you know, the first thing uh, that happened was the internships. You know, part of the curriculum uh, at, within Swiss Education Group, our students have to complete two mandatory internships. And here again, we've seen the industry adapting very, very quickly. I have students doing remote ships, right? Uh, so that's a new term, remote ships. Their students are working from home. Uh, they are working with companies, but they have different tasks, obviously. It's not a face-to-face -face with customers. It's, it's different tasks than a regular internship. Uh, so the students are doing remote chips. We obviously accept them as, as proper internships. Uh, but I can, we can see that, especially in Asia, there's more and more opening, more opportunities. Slowly but surely, there are more opportunities for the students. And our students are very adaptable. They're quick in finding um, different opportunities. And I have to also remind everybody that hospitality doesn't always mean hotels and yeah. restaurants, you know, that hospitality is in everything we do. And with a hospitality education, our students leave the school with being experts in accounting, in digital marketing, economics, 
statistics, law, you know, there's a very broad spectrum uh, that hospitality covers. So our students really can look for different positions in different industries. Oh, absolutely right. And that's actually my next point, really, is that hotel schools are actually have a greater meaning, I suspect, to become out of this for all businesses. And I suppose my question is, can we mark, do we need to do more to market that? Or do you, or do you think businesses do understand that already? Max, you want to? Uh, I'd love to, sure. <laughs> I mean, we, I know we're fully aligned on this. Yes, right exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, it is a certain element that, that's why we, we don't necessarily call ourselves a hotel school, but rather, you know, I'd rather always say, you know, school of life because yeah. we bring the element of a solid business program and education, combine it with art of hospitality and then combine the element of life because of these internships that we have. So I think the, the understanding more and more, and maybe we're not being loud enough about it. Mm -hmm. The understanding is that when you combine, consider the art of hospitality, as I always say, is the, is the art of welcoming guests, clients, customers, and then being able to break apart and put together an amazing experience for them that they never forget about it. They wanna come back for more of it. And they want to tell everybody else about it. And then as a third part, building long, strong relationships, that applies by far to any industry. There is no business around the world that would survive without those elements. And the added on, the creme la creme, as we say on, on, on top of, you know, is the fact that our students are able to connect to the industry, but also learn this specific art of doing that already before they graduate and go into the real world, because we'll bring the real world to them through the industry. And, and I think that we need to make a much bigger uh, noise about this and promote this a lot more across the board because we see that impact considerably more everywhere and their emotional intelligence and resilience is something that grows across the years that are with us. And the result of that we're saying now, if you, we were talking about the industry just now and, and of course the impact is massive globally, but that also means that within a year from now or two, there are going to be thousands of opportunities that never existed before for all of our students that are about to graduate in the next coming years. Yep. I'm not sure if, if uh, Chris screen froze just briefly. Yeah, I think so too. It's, it's very nice to see that you agree fully, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure you've sensed that as well, Ulrika, that yeah. uh, the, the, the messaging and the agility yeah. has been there for sure. And I'm sure the yeah. recording will cover that. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> but like I said, it's interesting, you know, that when you look at the businesses now calling it remote chips, yeah. you know, uh, instead of internships. And like I said, we have students that are very engaged, they're doing very, very well, and they find it exciting. Uh, and I, like you said before, that you know, we'll see much more people working from home or have a different timetable than having to go to work, maybe. Absolutely. I mean, the industry has changed now, has changed, and will continue to change. Yeah. And it will never be the same again. No. But that doesn't mean it doesn't need authentic, professional, professional. people who know why they do what they do, with yeah. a purpose, and get out there to really rock it. Yeah. So I think we both agree that we need to promote hospitality schools, maybe not call them hotel schools, but more hospitality. Because it encompasses Business so many different topic. industries. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes. And let's see if we have Chris with us. Back. I, 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 am, I apologize for that. I have, we had lightning, which suddenly seemed to take oh, me. Oh, wow. Completely. When you talk of hospitality, these things could happen. Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I paused the recording. So hopefully that worked. Well, we continue talking, so we and have- And the recording button was, uh, you know, the light on recording was on all the time, so we try to keep it in a matter <laughs> yeah, of- that, <laughs> <laughs> that brought it to an interesting moment. But yeah, I've suddenly got lightning suddenly hitting for the first time, so- uh, Are you okay? I'm all good. Safety first. <laughs> yes. I'm all good. <laughs> Just trying, there we go. We're back on, let's uh, start again. Right, so I think we were talk this, we'll start this again and make sure it, I'll go through it a bit later. Um, but we're talking about how this, we'll start again as we talk about the students. Yes. Um, obviously the experience they're getting and how they actually are changing at this point in time. So it's good. We were talking That's about the remote chips, you know, that a lot of industries have now changed from internships to remote chips and that they're offering different opportunities, you know, that they also are open um, to new opportunities and new mm. ways of doing business. And has education changed as a result, do you think, as a result of this? 
as the way you teach, will that have changed now as we go forward? I think so, yes. I think we're, we still have the core, the hospitality, the passion for working with people will always be there. You know, the need of, of looking after uh, the customers, the guests will always be there. Uh, but I think the students now realize how well equipped they are to adapt to change. You know, that if something happens, we address it, we fix it, we come up with new solutions. It's not that uh, let's plan something six months from now or one year from now. Uh, and like we said earlier, I think both Max and I saw how engaged the students were when we told them, okay, it's virtual learning experience yeah. from home in 10 days. They just were on board, no issues, no problems. Um, so I think the students realize that, you know, adapting, changing comes with the industry, comes with the profession, and they did it very, very, very well. Um, the, one of the things that occurs to me, obviously, I mean, Max, you obviously are also involved in the culinary side. And the one of the things we're seeing is actually tastes are changing, the food styles are changing. Are you having to adapt that side of the business? Well, we are obviously continuously trying to improve and enhance in that uh, sense. And we've obviously promoting even design new courses that are coming around that are already actively running. For instance, a vegan and vegetarian course, short course that has been just launched right now in the middle of the pandemic. We're just running it right now this term, in the summer term, with great popularity. It's doing very well. Uh, um, and, and we're trying to connect that to the idea of how to also be a you know, chef entrepreneur so that you are resilient and able to manage these challenges that are around. But obviously people still want to le eat and, and have a beautiful culinary experience. Maybe even more now more than ever, you want to escape that momentarily, you know, momentarily and get that amazing experience. And what better way to fill that void than with an amazing culinary experience that brings all the senses out. And in fact, some of the highlights that, that I realized that we had in the past 11 days was special, unique uh, culinary experiences. I just have to say, mention the executive chef of the uh, Four Seasons Hotel in Prague, uh, Chef Leonardo, not DiCaprio, obviously, <laughs> Leonardo Di Clemente, amazing chef who came out, welcomed us, showed us around, made sure we, we saw the upstairs of the new pop-up restaurant they had, and he kept sending out special delicious dishes. And frankly, that was the main, that was the best, kind of culinary experience I've had in the past couple of four or five years. And, and we work immediately with amazing culinary artists on our campuses so that, so these highlights are gonna be more important than ever. And we try to do everything we can to keep that relevant and to the point, uh, be it in the uh, bachelor degree that we offer across three years or uh, being in the shorter programs, you know, for chefs or for the pastry and chocolate arts that we do in the Lucerne campus that we have. So there is that element of, speed and agility and actually connected to what Erika is saying, this is what I'm discovering that certain businesses, certain groups, and thankfully also the Swiss education group has been able to wrap up in a beautiful way, speed and agility, which has led to today's, just the August 1st launch of an entirely new online e-certificate range of courses, online short courses that I don't think would have been there had it not been for the speed and agility that the business really got into because of the pandemic. And how do you think hospitality is going to change as an overall industry as, as a result of this? I think it's going to be less in terms of what we call hospitality industry, the feeling of it, but it's going to spread more just like the way we talked about it before, that it's going to be much more recognized in the way of being able to key, uh, kind of bring in customers and to keep them. And the special care that you need to have dealing with people and to dealing with businesses across the board. So I think the message is going to be hospitality will be for everyone. And it's going to be much more connected to businesses across industries. And I'm hoping really that that helps the world kind of see that excellence doesn't have to go hand in hand with arrogance. It should go hand in hand with empathy, which is the very core essence of hospitality. Yes, no, actually, that's my hope. Eureka, your thoughts on this? Yes, I was just going to say the same thing with Max, but obviously included in that will be the new precautionary measures. Yeah. Uh, I think when you look at the safety and, and hygiene standards and social distancing, I think that will stay with us for some time. 
I don't probably think, never go away, right? No, I don't think so either. So I think that's another way of, of doing. And I think maybe even artificial intelligence will come up. There will be much more technology, much more different ways of delivering some services um, to the guests in order to avoid uh, the direct contact. So, I suppose that leads, leads me very nicely onto that piece about but there's two different subjects. One is AI and how AI is going to impact an industry, isn't it? Yeah. And how that impacts on your own education. And the other, yeah. of course, is sustainability as well. Isn't yes, it? absolutely. Both of those. And, and we touch on both these subjects in our curriculum at the moment, in both Mike's and my, my school, or in all Swiss education group schools. That is an important um, element of the curriculum. So yeah, like uh, Mike said, I think the hotels will need to look at sustainability, AI, and the way um, they provide services to the customers. And it's not short term, this is going to be long term. I mean, it's, the AI one is coming quite a controversial piece, isn't it? Yeah. But again, I know over here, a lot of AI products have been looked on. A lot of companies are developing AI to obviously deal with that piece mm. of service. Um, but actually, people want that personal connection. And actually, so we, we find we're getting double, almost double narratives going on. Yeah. Uh, one which is trying to keep people away, and the other one is bring people together. And it's actually how we, that's going to be the hard challenge, isn't it? Exactly. Finding the balance is going to be the challenge. I think so, too. Yeah. You know? um, but I mean, you know, for certain things uh, with menu or ordering or the keys, uh, checking in, those things could be partially uh, with technology. But the face-to-face, the -face, the, like Max said, the empathy, the care, the eye contact, the feeling that you mean something, that will never go away. That can never be replaced by technology. That's right. Now, your students come from all around the world. Are you getting different... Um, uh, feedback from different parts of the world in terms of students applying to come and join the courses because you I think you're saying earlier that actually you're not seeing a dip at all you're actually getting an increased interest um, are there different parts of the world that are showing more interest or, or is it the same right across or is it just a general appetite Max you want to well sure I mean I, I have to say we, we got students from over 100, 100 I think it's 101 nationalities across campuses and Frankly, besides the initial concerns that were, and now that it's coming back more and more, I, I think the interest is global. And, you know, families are, I mean, once they're understanding more and more what the idea of hospitality is connected to the proper business solid education, uh, they're more open to it. And, and also considering Switzerland, uh, if we go Swiss specific as a Swiss experience, uh, you know, having ranked number one in the most safest country, you know, during the pandemic right now, and, you know, with countries like the U.S. sort of going through a challenge, U.K. as well, Switzerland seems to become more and more the go-to place in terms of sustainable, stable environment in a safe manner that you can actually go to and get a proper business education in. And, and not only consider hotel or tourism, because hotel and tourism fundamentally are tools that we use to offer that experience to our students of a proper business education. So that kind of goes hand in hand, really. And innovation, sustainability, as well as being entrepreneurial, mm. all in the same, in same way. So that's why if I connect to AI, I am not as concerned. I think if AI is done well, it will take away the jobs that nobody wanted anyway. Hopefully, it's going to create some chaos. There's no doubt about it. But then it is going to make that, those special human skills, the soft skills that some people call the fluff. I always say that it's the fluff that makes you tough. Because that's going right. to be what's going to matter when people are interacting with people. The human-to-human -human interaction is going to demand a lot more of that. So I that's where I'm really I've, hopeful. I had a lovely conversation a couple of weeks ago with a couple of professional accountancy companies who were telling me sustainability was the fluff. I was trying to, and I was trying to, <laughs> I, think so. I, I hate to break it to you. That's actually going to be a major uh, yes. buying piece. Yes. yes. That's yes. the danger of buzzwords, Chris, because, uh, you know, you can say sustainability and you can go to an entirely political agenda or you can do to what it actually is supposed to mean. Mm. Oh, so then okay. depending on how you see it and define it, then it's a whole new book and chapter. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely right. Because actually most people don't actually understand it. Um, how are you having to adapt yourselves to the sustainability piece? Because it is growing all over the place. How are you, how are you making changes yourselves? In this? Uh, on campus? Well, it was in education in terms yes, of how in you the teach. I mean, it's yeah. moving at such a pace, isn't it? Yeah, but it is touched upon in each course uh, because it's not just in one, it's not only in housekeeping, for instance. You have that in every department, in every course, uh, we talk about sustainability in different ways. And the students themselves 
are very eager in pushing this forward. You know, they are very much pushing us to improve in the way we look at waste, food waste, for instance, here in the school, how we recycle, how we reuse. They're very much the drivers sometimes uh, when it comes to sustainability. This is an interesting. Max, your thoughts on this one? It's the same thing here. I mean, it connects immediately to their hands-on experience that they have on campus because they are, you know, doing, doing a buffet service and fine dining service, etc. So they get that idea of the food waste because they are eating and, and seeing the food being produced on campus every single day, and they are getting to touch bases of it and see the value chain going across, as well as having the culinary side as well. You know, the students there also keep applying and seeing the whole food, you know from farm to market aspect of things and, and it kind of connects environmental aspects, strategic management aspects, human resources aspects across the board. Now I'm talking to the Swiss education group as a whole. It really consistently focuses on and not only the aspect of the fluff that somebody would say just sustainability, but actually trying to adapt it to a professional way of dealing with it strategically so that you don't remove experiences but add these elements of, of sustainability to it. A good example would be, I was just talking to, a, a general, to the general manager of the Sofitel in Frankfurt, in Germany, and they've, they've been forced to kind of remove a lot of the smaller things, items in the rooms, like the covers of the rooms and then the pen and the paper and, and you know, a lot of the accessories that would make a room much more delightful to experience. But if right now they just removed it. And then how do you sustainably go back to that safely uh, so that it doesn't look like you're just co saving cost and actually having a mindful way of treating things with, you know, with a safety mindset. That balance, I think, is going to be absolutely crucial for any business out there because once you look at it, really, some businesses use the aspect of green and environmental just to save money. Others have truly long-term objectives and trying to do it sustainably in a way that they still delight and offer an amazing, breathtaking experience. And the students are aware of these companies. Mm. Huh? I don't agree, Max. I think a lot of this. I do. Yeah. You know, when they go for internships and look for yeah. jobs and careers, they are looking at is this company making a difference, and do I relate, and can I see myself working for this company or not? So the students are very aware yeah. of what's happening out there. And as well, you're very right because that connects to their real life experience yep. that they get. Yeah. Now it's only right to touch on the whole millennial issue. Because uh, actually, as you'll know, and I'm sure you've had this conversation a thousand times, uh, you know, there's a lot of people saying millennials aren't the same, young talent isn't the same as it used to be type conversations, or and are, is leadership coming through? Uh, your take on this one? Absolutely. I, I do think, yes, uh, there are different ways. Obviously, it's a generation that has different ways of learning or, or, or working, but they are very driven you know, they want to make a change. They want to make a difference. Uh, I've only seen positive things coming from our students. Uh, they're very much go-getters. Uh, they want more. Yes, they want it maybe quicker than maybe for my generation, where we knew it would take time, you know, to, to reach your goal professionally. Uh, this generation wants things quicker, uh, but they adapt. Uh, they have empathy. They have care. Uh, they see the big picture. I mean, I, I think that's a fantastic sound around, isn't it? Max, your thoughts on all this? You know, I used to talk a lot uh, in my own business in the past about millennials and how to manage millennials. And then we started talking within the group also about Generation Z. Yeah. How do you manage Generation Z? What are their traits? You know, there is one thing and there is something to it, of course, with, with specifics. However, once you get anybody to understand what it is they do well, what they love doing, and they're you know, to show them a way that they can combine it so that they can find a value, a product, a service that they offer to the world every single day. Actually, if they can wake up in the morning and say, how may I serve? Connecting to their why and purpose. Any generation, if you, we are able to lead our students and guide them and mentor them in that way, that they find that, no one in the future will look at them as employees or whatever they may be and say, oh my God, I should have never hired a Generation Z or a millennial, wow. et cetera. I think well, it's, that's been missing in education for a very long time. And I'm very excited to be a part of a group where we actually do focus on what is your purpose? What is your why from day one? Try to combine the business, hospitality, and life. Because without that personal development, they stand after three years with a double degree possibly in their hands 
and they turn to mommy and daddy and say, mom, daddy, what should I do now? But well, we try to hold their hands every single day from the beginning so that they can walk and talk in the way that they understand who they are so that they can deliver the best of them to the world. And I see that across our campuses. Let's talk a bit about the, the both of you, because you both had quite int um, varied lives, interesting lives. Um, I think and you come from obviously a, a um, operational or industry backgrounds as well. Um, how have you seen the changes over the years and, and actually what encourages you about the future now? Rika, shall I start with you? Yeah, well, uh, like you said, my background is that of uh, hotel management. I went to hotel school here in Switzerland as well. Uh, and I chose hospitality because I wanted to travel. I liked to be able to go anywhere in the world. I saw growth in every department. You know, you could go to the front office or marketing or finance. Um, and I loved not having to maybe have a Monday to Friday job. I love that energy, you know, that the hotel gives. So I was fortunate, I've had a, an interesting career that led me to different locations. And I think at the core, nothing much has changed. You know, people first uh, will always be there. That has not been a change. It, it's looking after each other, not only with the guests, but looking at each other as a team. You know, I worked in the Caribbean for many years and you had, you know, natural disasters and, and hurricanes and, and awful things happening. But the spirit of working together, looking after one another um, and looking after the guest, I think that has not changed. Uh, that is still absolutely there. Now, how we provide the services obviously would have changed, you know, when it comes again to technology with the keys and the check-in and, 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 and all of those kind of things. But the passion, the energy, the care has, has not changed. Max, your thoughts? I'll say to Rika, thanks. You know, I, I I grew up in a very touristic island in Sweden, and it's got 50,000, 60,000 people living there. But then every summer across three months, we get a million visitors. So I kind of, my first job was as a waiter in the hospitality, and nobody talked about hospitality back in the days. So I didn't even know what hospitality was, but I just knew, because even, even as a summer job, I just loved it, that interaction and that immediate feedback you get. And, and then I, I went to business school and engineering school first because nobody told me you could actually study hospitality <laughs> as, as an educational path. So that would have changed my life entirely. But then it took me, you know, and then I, I ended up working with uh, STS language schools across Malta and the UK and actually really working within the hospitality and educational side. But then I left entirely when I graduated and, and I went into the world of uh, corporate business for many, many years. And then I, you know, when I turned 40, I decided this is it. I will never again touch anything that doesn't connect to hospitality. And, and I even then didn't know it was hospitality. I just found my why and purpose that I think life's not about the number of breaths we take, but the moments that take our breath away. And it's through hospitality that you deliver those and experience those special moments. So everything I want to do is to make sure that people wake up in the morning and know what, why they do it, because that's the only way they're going to delight themselves and everybody around them and make the world a more sustainable and happier place for everybody. So I agree with Ulrika. I mean, I've been obsessed with hotels and, and hospitality across the world ever since I, I you know, remember since I was a teen and, and I've been an obsessed customer as well at the same time. And I see that the tools have changed, the means and, and, and the methods have changed, but there is one common theme, denominator that's never changed. And that is the human interaction. And, and, you know, you can pick up a phone here and just say, okay, the distraction is there and people constantly distracted and they can't focus. And which is true, but in the same time, the opportunity to be exceptional has grown because less and less people are able to focus on that human experience. And if you are able to, you stand out pretty quickly. And that's what I see in terms of the human element has not gone away. And I think more than ever now, going through a pandemic and the new normal that's coming, that human understanding is going to be exactly what's going to make people yeah. uh, successful going forward. And being able to stand up and tell their story and, you know, be brave enough to, to speak up as well and to connect with people. Yeah. Now, Max, you mentioned the new normal a couple of times during our <laughs> chat today. Um, what, how do you see the new normal? I think it's me and everybody else around the world, everywhere you <laughs> look in LinkedIn or whatever, you never was a new normal. I think it's, it's uh, I hope it, we're not going towards a, a world where the extreme control is on continuously. Uh, I think people can take responsibility. I think if you look across somewhat Sweden, but also especially Switzerland, 
across the months of, of the pandemic, people has, uh, what I've witnessed has been extreme responsibility delivered by the uh, you know, residents and, and the government measures have been very measured in a way that it has not inhibited businesses to the level that it could mm. versus many other countries. And I think Switzerland today is a better country for it. And I hope that it goes in a way that we learn to improve. We learn to be safe and more health conscious and hygiene conscious. I got to say a couple of experiences I had along the, the past uh, week of the hospitality tour was number one, a hotel immediately that removed everything from the buffet in the breakfast. There was no breakfast buffet. The buffet would come to your table. So you had yeah. a menu you could order from. The basics were on the table, beautifully laid out just for you. Mm -hmm. And then the staff were, of course, with a mask and everything. So you felt simply, wait a minute, this makes, this makes sense. This is something that they've thought about carefully and are doing. The screens they have at the reception when you're checking in. A, the, on the bad negative side, we would see staff basically putting the cutlery on the table directly after having cleaned it, you know, taken off a table, not even wiped it, but just putting the cutlery on the table, not even on a cloth, and just repeating it over and over. That takes away. Or a buffet, which is still fully open, but people are asked to simply wear a mask. You're not going to, you know, that, that's not so. There are elements that people haven't learned about and, and should have, but there are ways to deal with it going forward. And I think the ones who comply best and make you feel safe and comfortable at the same time, that's going to be what's going to be necessary. Anybody who can't, they will not survive for long in terms of their business. I don't think so. Yep. That's very interesting. Your yeah, I was just going to say on, on top of that, but I also for me, I think it's wonderful to see how we are now embracing our neighborhoods, you know, the, the areas around us. Uh, I know all, every country, every destination is now promoting their historic venues or, or their special uh, areas. It's nice to see, and, and especially in Switzerland, and I don't think many of us. Uh, will travel that far, you know, international flights. Uh, some airports are still closed. Uh, airlines are still not flying. So I don't think it will be a given for any of us to fly far away this summer or next year. But it's wonderful to see how the tourism offices uh, and destinations are very much promoting the, the local areas. You know, we are experiencing local hotels, local restaurants, uh, you know, the parks, the city next door. Um, it, it's, I, I find that very, very positive, you know, that we don't have to travel that far to experience beautiful places, beautiful locations, and create memories in your own city and in your own country. Uh, that's a, that's a, we are lucky in terms really, of that, obviously, you know, because we're in <laughs> Switzerland as well. So that kind of really helps. And the domestic tourism, the regional one, has really flourished yes, in many absolutely, areas. Absolutely, absolutely. Occupancy rates in, tour, in, in hotels, that are having the domestic tourism coming to them, the domestic visitors, yeah. absolutely skyrocketing. Yeah. I was in Montreux, you know, which is the French speaking side, yeah. just a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't imagine, I've never heard this much switch, uh, switch Swiss German spoken yes. on the French speaking yes. side of Switzerland, actually. Yeah. But they're very good in coming up with new ideas or promoting these areas, you know, special absolutely. packages, discounts. Uh, has, there been, has there been much government investment into that? Is that interesting or not? Yes, I think if, yeah. from the tourism office, they are coming up with different ways of, of getting people to stay in Switzerland, like I said, with discounts in hotels and mm -hmm. uh, tourism destinations, uh, passes, you know, here in Switzerland, you have the beautiful Alps, even in the summertime, you can take the lifts up and hike around the Alps, so you have special deals on, on those things, so uh, it, it really is nice to see, and I guess every country is doing that now, you know, promoting okay. the local... I'm, con I'm conscious of time. Um, if you had a magic wand, what do you hope will come out of this? I hope that this, if I may say so, positive area atmosphere of wanting to make a change, of looking after each other, um, it remains. You know, that we don't go back to being cold, so to say, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, that it's just very fast paced, very quick. Uh, very efficient. I think we've all had time now to take a breath and appreciate the small moments in life and the interaction between our neighbors, our families, our cities, our community. 
um, uh, we care more in some way. And I think that remains, that, that stays. Max? Same thing here. I think uh, there are many opportunities that are, that are gradually now presenting themselves these days. And if we take them carefully and mindfully and are able to kind of really apply them to a more sustainable future, and, and I don't use the word sustainable at all, you know, lightly, uh, so that we can actually utilize the human element because that's what's going to be the technology, you know, technology is going to drive and then be more and more visible. AI is coming and all these changes are going to be one after another. And who says there's no more pandemics, et cetera. So the uncertainty is there. And I hope that if we, if we take advantage of the moment and realize that through the care and excellence combined, we can make the world a better place and then really push forward to that and not opportunistically simply use the quick wins that we could that are there right now and then go back to the same kind of yeah, no. attitude and mindset then we haven't learned anything mm -hmm. but if we do i think we can make across the industry of hospitality what we would call it a much better job of attracting people and welcoming them and across other businesses to be much more mindful and focused on what the experiences that we are delivering and not only make it for the next quarter results and profits but also do it for a profitable, successful way of making the world a better place to live for everybody. Yep. And that, that is a win-win that is fully possible. I have to say, I love your enthusiasm for the students as well and how it's come together. It's actually very reassuring to see. Uh, the feedback you're getting from industry, uh, tell me, is that being positive as well? Or are they being, being fretful, shall we say? Well, I think initially when, when this whole pandemic occurred, I think everybody was very frightened, obviously scared. Uh, one didn't know where this would end. So I, yes, there were reservations and like I said, fear from the industry, but we're now seeing that that is changing. Like I said before, they are very good in coming up with different ways of offering opportunities to the students or to others, you know, remote ships or other job opportunities. So I think they are now adapting and, and finding new ways of, of being positive and staying positive. Uh, so yes, a couple of months ago, beginning of the year, I think we were all very worried, very frightened for the uncertainty, but that has definitely changed. We are seeing a lot more, uh, ideas and suggestions and, and openings and opportunities for the students. Nice. Absolutely. I think uh, the initial panic was there absolutely when we saw it across the board. I remember uh, Arne Sorensen, uh, the CEO of Marriott, coming out with that video that really inspired a lot of people around the world yeah. that the show must go on no matter what. And there have been a lot of leaders as well trying to make sure that the industry comes back. Now, a lot of the hotels I saw recently last week a lot of them are running on an occupancy rate of 20%, 20, 25, 30. And that's, of course, not sustainable in the long term. But when you meet their people on, on site at their properties, you don't feel it necessarily. With the properties that are running well, the enthusiasm and the energy is still there. And they believe in something that is coming soon to kind of revamp and make things better. So I really, for those businesses, I think, the enthusiasm is there and the positive mm -hmm. is there. And, and we are seeing it with the, you know, the partners that we have in the industry who are the solid ones who are weathering this through. I think they will be successful, even more successful going forward because there will be consolidation across industries. There's no doubt about that. And I hope that the, the ones who come through and make it through with realizing that there is a new level of excellence we can put across the board. And I think our students are seeing that more and more. Yep. Well, look, I thank you for your time. It's been lovely talking to you both. It really has. I think you're, you're a great advert for industry and representation ambassadors for the sector. So thank you so much. Well, no, thank you very much for this opportunity. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you both here.